Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And uh, this is a video that we will end up making public after a few days here. I'll, I'll kind of save it for one of those days where I, I need a little break and because uh, um, I got so much going on and it gives me a chance to share some amazing thoughts here with you guys. And, and we're going to get into not just faith, but I want to go into this with you along the lines of um, getting really that revelation, especially where Jesus says, "In that day, you will know that I am in that the let's see that I am in the Father, the Father's in me, and I am in you, and you are in me." That is one of the most provocative, uh, thought-provoking. I mean, absolutely. Well, of course, that's what provocative is. Uh, statements that I think that has ever, ever been made. And I, I'm really wanting to get you as believers to really, really understand that. By the way, I'm going to be sharing another video too. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly tell you a little bit about this. I, I saw, I think it was in South Carolina, they caught a massive, massive snake. I'm talking about horse size torso type snake that was captured in South Carolina. And uh, when I saw that, it, it, I was almost shocked because it looked like the snake that I saw in the vision many, many years ago where the Lord uh, told me that you have to cut his head off. Uh, and he tried to kill me the first time I wounded him. And the Lord said, he'll be more angry when he comes back after you again. And when he came back the second time, I mounted him like riding a horse. And the Lord said to me, you have to cut his head off to kill him. And um, I know that's a spiritual application, but when I saw that serpent, oh my gosh. Um, it was like jittery almost to see it because uh, it looked just like what I dealt with. Uh, and I didn't even know that there would be a serpent that could be that big that would even exist. So I want to share that with you guys. Um, I think, too, though, one thing I want, to, uh, I want to say to you before I even start this video here uh, is a little testimony that happened to me personally. And, uh, and I, I want to share the testimony because it kind of goes hand in hand with what we're going to talk about. And that was many, many years ago. And I say many years ago because my mother was still alive at the time. My mother passed away when she was 49 years old. Uh, I think I've shared some of the testimonies about her. She was totally blind. The Lord told me to pray for her. She got 20-20 vision, um, things like that. God raised her from the dead when she died. Uh, a lot of great miracles that happened to her uh, in, in, that, in that time frame. So I was, at that time when she passed away, I was 29 years old. So it was before my mother even passed away. Uh, my mother was still in decent health. So I would have to probably go back and say around the age of <laughs> well, it must have started closer to about, I don't know, maybe about the age of 23, something to that effect there. But I'd gotten a fungus in my blood system. Uh, it was, uh, doctors finally had diagnosed what type of fungus it was. But it was a fungus that was so strong, it, it would come out almost like what a ringworm would, but it was all kinds of squiggly looking lines. It wasn't like around like a ringworm, but it would still come out very raised on the skin. And, uh, but it had just some of the most awfulest looking patterns you could ever imagine. And then it wouldn't just be in one spot. It would be everywhere. Uh, I would get it on my arms. I would get it on my face. I would get it, you know, didn't matter where it was. It would just come out. And the next thing you know, it was just like torment. And I had this for nearly seven years, seven years. I remember when the doctor, I'd use all kinds of antifungal creams and all that would do is just kind of help suppress it from the surface of the skin, but it was still there. And the doctors uh, that worked with me on it, they said it was a fungus in my blood system. And the medication that they would use, they said, I, I could only take three pills. They said, if you take more, the medicine would actually kill you. Not just the fungus, but it would kill you as well. 
Um, and they said that there's still really no way to cure it. It's just there. Um, now, I'm sure people might differ with that today, but you got to remember, that, of course, that was still, though, uh, 30 years ago plus. Uh, but anyway, I'd had this for many, many, many years like that. And then uh, one day I just, I'd had enough. And I just, I, I just, it's like I drove my heels into the ground. And I said, no more. I said, Jesus Christ is my healer. And I'm healed. And I got, of course, naturally, when you stop using any kind of medication or any kind of uh, treatment, ointment treatment, et cetera, things like that, this stuff just gets unbelievably out of control. Uh, and literally, it's almost as if you look like you have leprosy. Uh, that's how bad, that's how horrible you would look with it, uh, especially when it's on your face, your neck, your ears, in your ear canal. I mean, I had it everywhere, and especially when I really took my stand and I believed that Jesus Christ had healed me. I said, there was, I said, I'm not, I said, look, I, I will not, I remember there was an old preacher, I used to love him, very, very precious brother, his name was Horace, and uh, and and he used to tell me, uh, like if he had a headache, I would offer him a, a Tylenol or something, and he'd say, no, I, I'm not doing it. And I said, Brother Hor Horace, you don't want enough Tylenol? And he says, listen here. He said, I won't let one, I won't let him suffer one stripe in vain. And I thought, man, what, what faith that was, right? And so he would just suffer through it, you know. My father-in-law as well used to tell me, you know, he wouldn't take medicine either, you know, and he'd say, I could tell he would be suffering with a headache or maybe his arthritis was flared up or something. And I said, I said, we call him Ditto, which is grandpa in, in Slovak. Uh, so I said, Ditto, I said, can I give you something for pain? And he said, no, no. He said, I don't need anything for pain. I said, well, I know you're in pain. He said, well, pain go in, pain go out. Same way it come in, it can go back out. <laughs> I always thought that was so cute that he would do that, right? But he he just never would take medication. Um, and, and so he was extremely healthy. Um, uh, and sadly enough, we know that all too well, just how healthy he was now. I uh, won't go into that at this point. But at, at any rate, um, I had gotten extremely, extremely bad off. And I, I really began to stand on it, refused to use any of the creams, wouldn't take the medication anymore. And I was just being covered. I literally, I know, even if you looked in the mirror, I looked horrible. Uh, but when I would look in the mirror, I refused to acknowledge that it was there. And of course, it's very irritating as well. It's very itchy, etc. And um, uh, I remember my wife even said, she said, Stephen, my God, you've got to do something. She said, you look, un she said, you look atrocious. And I would look at her and I'd say, I don't know what you're looking at. I said, I said, praise God, I'm healed. I said, I, I look great. You know, I'd say that same thing to my mother. My mother would say, oh, my God, Stephen, you've got to go back to the doctor. You got you got to get the medication. You're just son. You're, you're this is this is just eating you alive. And I said, oh, mama, so what are you talking about? What's eating me alive? She said, the, it's, your whole face is covered in this fungus. I said, oh, no, mama. I said, I said, I had that long ago. I said, I said, Jesus Christ made me well. I said, and I don't have no problem at all. But I, And that stuff was irritating the mess out of me as I would say that. But you know, the thing was, I wouldn't back down. I refused to back down. And I probably went about a month standing on his promise every single day. I confessed as if as th that what you could not see. I confessed that I was healed as though it was already done, even though there was no evidence whatsoever for it. Because I knew that what you say, God will make your body obey. And I knew if I stood on his word and said and declared that I was healed, that God would make my body obey that. And I didn't care how he did it. I wasn't going to try to figure it out. I just knew that was a fact. And one morning I woke up, and when I did, all that, and it was even on my arms, just covered. And suddenly, 
everything dried. It just dried up. And by the next day, I didn't have a fungus one on me nowhere. My own family was freaked out by it. They said, how in the world could that have happened? Do you know it has never returned in all those years? And I had it for about seven years. And then when I stood on his word, about a month of standing, and then I was totally healed. And I may have already shared that with you guys. I don't know if I did. Sometimes I forget, you know, for years I never would share testimonies with people. But then as I began to share them, I, I could have shared that with you guys already. But it still seems to be appropriate for what I wanted to share with you tonight. So let's take real quick Matthew chapter 12. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now that's, that's a little different. But I, I wanted to read this anyway. There's a reason behind this. Okay, so just hold on to this. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words shall you be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. You know, that used to bug me, that scripture right there. Uh, evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. But yet we have another scripture in the Bible that says, These signs shall follow them that believe. And one day the Lord revealed to me what the difference was on those two. He said, signs follow those that believe because they believed already. They believed without anything. They weren't seeking the sign. They believed God's word and therefore the signs followed them. But he said, the evil and adulterous generation, they want the sign first, then they will believe, right? Well, it don't work like that. It's not how it works with God, right? So hold this scripture in your mind as we move forward a little bit here. Let's see. And this is why I'm going to, this is where I'm going to get to it here. So this one again, we're going to hold another one in, in your heart. This is in uh, I, think, I believe it's Genesis, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, chapter is it chapter? Maybe not Genesis. Let's go up and see. No, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, verse five. I am the Lord, and there is none else beside me. There is no God. I have girded you, though you have not known me that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is no, no one else. Now watch what he says here. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I am the Lord that doeth all these things. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open that they may bring forth salvation and let her cause righteousness to spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Now, what I have highlighted in, in green, verse 7, right really in the middle, I make peace and create evil. Ose Shalom, which is creating peace. Obore Ra. Actually, Ose is the word for do. I do peace. Because the word Bore is for the word creation. And create evil. Ani Yehovah. Ose Kol Ale. I do all these things. There's a reason why I wanted to read that. And we're going to get to that in a moment as well. Let me first go though to the book of John. And this may be where I can finally break it down for you. Yes, this is where it's at. Let me back up though a little bit here. Jesus said unto them, Have I been so long time with you, 
Yet have you not known me, Philip? I think Philip says, show us the Father. Yeah, yeah. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet have you not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest you, then, show us the Father? Believe you not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Pay close attention to this now. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do. Did you catch that? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Hmm. But yet the Father is in him, and he's in the Father. But he's going to go to the Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells in you, and shall be in you. Isn't that an interesting verbiage right there? For he dwells with you. I'm sorry, and I actually said the word in you. I apologize. I actually said that incorrectly. For he dwells with you, and shall be in you. In you. That's why you'll do greater works when he goes to the Father. Because at that point, the Holy Spirit had not been given yet. So see, that's why it says, for he dwells with you. That was the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ that was dwelling with them. But shall be in you, because when he died, he would pour out his Spirit which was the Holy Spirit, which would quicken them and bring them to life. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's a personal pronoun. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world sees me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know, here's where this is the important part, that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Hold it close. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now, we're going to pause right there for a moment. I want to back up. Let's see here. Hang on, where did I see it at? I've already passed it, I guess. Hang on. Yeah, there it is, the one in blue right here. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. That was when you received the Holy Spirit. Now this is the part I'm wanting you to get. And then we're going to look at some scriptures based on faith here. When the Holy Spirit came upon you, everything 
that God is, everything that Jesus Christ is. And if you notice, I said is, not was, is, dwells within you. Many times people have faith and don't even know they have faith. And I'm going to prove that to you in just a moment. That's why I give you these other scriptures to start with. One, I wanted to show you that both God, Jesus Christ himself, in other words, both the Father and Jesus Christ, they dwell within one another. Jesus said, I don't do anything except the Father shows me. He said, if you can't believe me, believe the very works, for they testify of who I am. As it says in another place in the scripture, no man could do the works that he does, except that the Father be with him. Yeah, very true. It said in the scriptures I read to you over here in Isaiah, I create. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. That's a little bit of a provocative statement when God says he creates evil. Do you realize how many times you've done the same thing? You see, a lot of Christians don't even realize that the very, when they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they, they forget that what Jesus said, in that day you will know that I am in you, or I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, and I am in you, and you are in me, right? And I'm kind of paraphrasing that right now. So everything that God is, everything that Christ is, dwells inside of you. And God does peace, and he does evil, creates evil as well. So what are you getting at, Brother Steve? In other words, how many times when a believer, I'm talking about genuine believers now, I'm not talking about the make-believers, we're talking about real believers, know good and well that the Scripture says, anything. Jesus says, anything you ask in my name, I'll do it. Right? Many other Scriptures that can go with that as well. Let's take for it, let's get a look at a few things here real quick. Therefore, I say unto you, Matthew chapter 11, verse 24. Mark, I'm sorry, Mark, Mark chapter 11, verse 24. I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you, for, if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. Because, see, Mark also knew that's a little, that can be a hindering block right there. For your faith, if you've got unconfessed sin, or you got you did something to somebody and you didn't, or they, you know, you got a problem between you and your brother. If that's not fixed, that can hinder your faith because your mind's on that; it's not on the promise. And and we'll back up. Let's back up a verse. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Yeah, and that's including a real mountain. I ain't talking about a mountain of sin, as some of the Baptist preachers like to say. He didn't say a mountain of sin, he said a mountain. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever... What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. All right, there's one. Let's look at Ephesians. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So don't look at your outside. Don't look at your flesh. Don't be paying attention to what, what you do in the flesh. You're going to make mistakes in life. But you're not bound to that mistake. And that's where you need a revelation. See, sin is unbelief. Sin is not the fact that somebody committed adultery, somebody stole, uh, somebody cheated the neighbor. That's not sin. That's, you did that because you didn't believe God's word in the first place. And so you yield to that. The true sin is the unbelief. 
that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. All right? We're, gonna, we're coming back to the other one in just a moment. We're going to get to it in a minute. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice that Cain by, than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Did you notice that Enoch was, was translated and didn't see death because he had that kind of a faith? Do you realize that you could have that kind of faith as well and not have to die? And don't use the scripture, oh, it's a point of man who wants to die and after this the judgment. The whole chapter is about Jesus Christ, nothing to do with you as an individual. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You don't give up. You don't look at the, your circumstances, your symptoms or anything else. You hold to the promise. By his stripes, I am healed. Pa not, not That is a past tense statement. You believe things as if they already are. They already happened, right? We're going to come back. I'm still going to come back to that one over there in Isaiah. Just hold on. Um, this, this one really is, let's see. I only got this one for one reason. This is about the young man that had the deaf and dumb spirit uh, that Jesus cast out of him. And he said, he says to the father, if you can, can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. That's the main thing. I want you to just hold on to that one there. Let's see here. Okay. And then that's, I kind of ended there. There's more that I could, could be sharing with you, but that's where I stopped at. Now, let me go back though. This is what I, this is the summation I wanted to show to you when I, when I showed you this one here, where God says, I make peace. I create evil. I am the Lord that doeth all these things. I said to you, I quoted to you where Jesus says that, you know, and I think that was over here in Mark. <clears throat> Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's not in Mark. That was in John. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I am in you. So if he's in the Father, the fact that Christ is in us, we get, we get, we get everything. We get the whole package deal. And the Father, we know, created the light and or, or made the light or, I'm sorry, created the light, but he also makes peace and creates evil. And because God lives within you, whatever you say will come to pass. I want you to think about that for a minute. If you wake up in the morning and you talk about you're in pain, and I'm not saying that you're not in pain. But if you stand on the promise of God that you're healed or whatever you have need of, it doesn't have to be healing. It might be you're in a financial hardship. And yet the scripture says, I, I would above all that you prosper and be in good health. So you got a double blessing right there from God. Because God says above all, above everything, he wants you to prosper and be in good health. He's not interested in you begging for bread. This is how I know you have faith. Many of you have faith. Because as you go in your daily life, remember there's another scripture, and I forget where it's at, where Paul talks about the tongue as an unruly member of the body. It sets the whole world on fire. You can set your whole life on fire with your own tongue by what you speak about yourself. I'm broke. I'm poor. Uh, one day I'm hoping to get out of this situation I'm in. Uh, it might be I'm in a bad marriage. I got a horrible husband. I got a horrible wife. Um, uh, I just can't stop lusting. I can't, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I, 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 everything's I, I, I. I'm sick. I'm miserable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm getting worse. 
and you forgot who dwells within you. And he's not wanting you to create evil. When God created evil, there was a reason behind what those actions were brought about. When it comes to you as an individual, he wants you to speak life and more abundantly. He wants you to speak healing. But because you have so much faith, every negative thing you say manifest in your life. If you say you're worse off, you're going to be worse off. If you say you got a horrible wife, she's going to be more horrible. Poor girl probably doesn't even know what's happening to her that you and your big mouth or vice versa, sister to your husband. You know, I got, I'm telling you, he, Brother Steve, he's the worst husband you could ever even imagine. And the more you speak that over him, the more he'll become that. Now, I'm not saying peop, some people don't get into bad relationships. You know. That's a different testimony I can speak about on that. But the thing is, I also know that what you speak, God will hear. God will answer. Sometimes I've watched it before. People acclaim divine healing and they'll be like, praise God, I'm healed and everything. Then the next day they feel a little bit of the pain again. It didn't, nothing didn't really take that night. And they start, oh my God, this is getting worse. You're like a yo-yo. You know what I mean? I can just see how your body has to react. You know, one moment I'm healed, the other next day I'm sick. I'm healed, I'm sick. I'm healed, I'm sick. Body gets better, body goes down. Body gets better, body goes down. Constantly back and forth. Because you forget that God lives inside of you. You forget that He creates good and He creates evil. And you have become the mouthpiece of God. God is using, remember, you are the temple of God. You are the body of Christ. Did Christ ever go around with a negative attitude? Did he ever go around with, oh, I don't feel so great today. Oh my gosh, nothing's gonna good's gonna come out of this. No. Everything was about faith. And he would say it to the people, be it unto you according to your faith, or according to as you have believed, so be it unto you. But then he said those remarkable words. Did I go to the Father? He said, In the works that I do, you'll do also greater than this because I go to the Father. Do you know why it would be greater? He was already doing all the works because the Father and Him, and Him, those two together, they were doing some amazing things. But he said, greater than this, because I go unto the Father. Why? Because now he's going to take the Father. And he's, see, the Father was already in him, but he said he goes to the Father. There's something, I don't quite understand what that is, but he goes to the Father, but then he comes back. He says, I'll not leave you comfortless, but I will come, and I will be with you, even in you. And when he comes back, he went, and the Father, they come together. And they're inside of you right now. So whatever you say, the same God that created the heavens and the earth, the darkness, the sky, the, the, the sunlight, the light, the darkness, everything. And by the way, the light and the darkness also represents a spiritual light and a spiritual darkness. But the point is, is because the very God of all creation lives within you, what you say is going to happen. Now, if you don't have any faith to begin with, don't worry about it. Even the negative is not going to happen either. But how many times, think, I want you to really think about it. Think about the things that you've been saying for the last six months. Think about how your life is going based on what you're saying then you'll realize you really do have faith. You just didn't know you had faith because you're creating all the negative in your life. 
Just simply repent. Say, Father, forgive me. I didn't know that. From now on, let my lips, let my tongue only speak of those things that you say. There's one other one. Let me, let me think of this one real quick for you as well. Paul made this beautiful statement. Renewing your mind. Romans 12, 2. All right, let's pull it up. And I'll, I'll close with this one for you here. Romans. I didn't read it, but I think that's the right one. Let me just find it real quick. Romans chapter 12, and it's verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Okay, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew your mind every day. Every day when you wake up, renew it, refresh it, and let it only be about Jesus Christ and His Word, His promises, His love. And then you will see God manifest in your life whatsoever things you say. I'm Steve Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. God bless you and have a good evening.